Good morning. Peace be with you. I hope you're all well. My title for our collective worship today is Making a Great Day Even Better. So I'm now going to show you parts of pictures and I want you to put your hand up when you think you know what occasion, and it's only one occasion, and it's a very special occasion, but what occasion that all of these pictures represent. So don't forget, it's a special occasion. Ready? Now that's the first picture. And the next one. Ooh, any ideas yet? You getting any closer? I'm sure you've all got it by now, haven't you? Yes, it's a wedding. And this photograph is of a very special wedding that was held at St. Chad's Church a few years ago now. But look at the amazing flowers. Aren't they beautiful? So we're going to talk about a wedding. The story about this wedding is from John's Gospel, which is in the New Testament, of course. And it took place in a place called Cana, which was not very far away from where Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Weddings at the time of Jesus were huge affairs. The whole village would have been invited and the wedding feast would have gone on for days. We are told that Jesus and his mother and Jesus' friends were invited, but we don't know any other details. But we do know this. The wine ran out. Now, this would have been awful for the families of the bride and groom. And Jesus' mother knew this and she didn't want to see them upset or hurt and she didn't want to see the very special day, ruined. So she went to Jesus and asked for his help. And then she went to the, one of the slaves and she said to the, this slave, do what Jesus instructs you to do. Whatever he tells you, do it. Now, in this place where the wedding were, there were these huge, huge, large jars. The jars were used to keep water in and they were used when people arrived to, ha to wash their feet. And so Jesus told the servants to fill these large jars with water. Now, each one of these jars... They're like barrels, aren't they? But they're made out of stone. Would have held up to 100 litres. That's an awful lot of water. When they'd finished filling the jars up, Jesus told them to fill a jug with the water from one of the jars and give it to the man in charge of the feast. And so this is what the slave did, the servant, if you prefer. He poured the water into the glass. And as he poured the water, it had become wine. And in John's Gospel, we are told this was the first sign that Jesus did 
John uses the word sign instead of miracle. Nobody except the slaves or servants knew where this water into wine had come from. Only the very poor people who were at this wedding knew about this miracle. So, why does John call these signs? He only records or writes about seven miracles in his gospel. And he calls them all signs that Jesus did. So, what does a sign, like the one on the slide, do? Well, I'm sure you've all got an idea of that. It points you towards somewhere or something. I've deliberately used a blank sign here, so it's not pointing at anything in particular. But for John, these signs showed who Jesus was, the type of person he was that he was God's son and that he was kind and he helped others. In this sign or this miracle of turning water into wine, we, are sh we can see how generous Jesus was. He didn't just turn a couple of jugs he turned over 600 litres of water into wine. And so John is showing us how generous God is with us. You know, sort of, I always take photographs when I go on holiday of hummingbirds because to me they show of God's love and God's wonderful creation. I'm sure you have other ways that you might think of that God shows how generous he can be with each one of us. This sign also shows us how Jesus wants to help ordinary people when they have problems. The slaves or the servants had a problem because the wine had run out. The bride and groom would have been so embarrassed to have the wine run out. Their parents wouldn't, oh, they'd have been humiliated. But Jesus decided to help this ordinary couple, these ordinary people in their small village. And Jesus wants to help all ordinary people, just like you and just like me, when we have problems too. Jesus had helped to solve a problem. He had turned water into wine and frowns into smiles. He had made a great day even better. Of course, we can't do miracles, but we can all try to be like Jesus and help other people if they have a problem. How might you help solve the following problems? What could you do if Someone couldn't find their coat before playtime. Can you think of what you could do to help? I'm sure you all can. What could you do if a friend or a grown-up said to you, I need some help? How could you help? What could you do?
Remember, helping to solve a problem isn't showing off. It involves noticing how others are feeling and it's showing concern for them. Helping to solve a problem can make a day better and happier for everyone. And so now I'm going to finish with a prayer. And if you agree and you want to join in, you can say Amen at the end. Father God, help us to remember how generous you are and how you are willing to help us. At moments when things go wrong, make us more willing and ready to help others. Help us work for you by turning today into a better day for everyone. Amen. Go in peace to help and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless.